So let's look at elliptic paraboloids. Now a paraboloid is going to be a surface that comes with just an uh, x squared, y squared, and a z term. And I don't actually mean that it has to be fixed like that. Like So you could have a, an x and a y squared and a z squared, or you could have um, an x squared and a y and a z squared. The key point is just that there are um, two that are squared and then um, one that is linear or not squared. Okay, and so we'll see later that if um, if all three appear squared, then, then you get something else. And if you don't have two squared terms, then you get uh, like a cylinder or something. So now um, it's called a paraboloid because the uh, traces that you get by holding x constant or holding y constant will be parabolas. And we'll see that um, <coughs> interesting things happen depending on, on the sign of the two squared terms. So if you have um, x squared, y squared have the, actually here, you know what, let me uh, rewrite this somewhere else. So um, we're going to look at in this clip at elliptic paraboloids. And for elliptic paraboloids, this means two things. This means that um, the squared terms have the same sign. That's what it means algebraically. Geometrically, it means that um, these parabolas open in the same direction. sort of ran out of room oh well okay so let's look at an example of such a thing so um, suppose uh, so if we have a, a, an equation that has two squared terms and they're both the same sign then we can write it as x squared over a squared or actually let's just put it in parentheses and then y over b squared and then equals z over C. And so uh, depending, like if the linear term is positive or negative, we can absorb that sign into the C. So we can always write it on the right hand side like this. And um, yeah, and since the X and Y are both uh, have the same sign, we can assume that they are both positive by multiplying the whole equation by negative one, like I talked about in, in the last clip. Okay, so let's see. So <clears throat> now, um, in order to illustrate what this surface looks like, let's consider um, just a simple case a equals b equals c. And so then we're looking at z equals x squared plus y squared. And we'll, I'll talk about what happens when a, b, and c are different uh, in just a moment. But for now, let's look at this. So we'll do some traces here. So we can consider, um, let's see, z equals zero. So the trace for that one, um, well then that's x squared plus y squared equals zero. We actually did that on a, on a previous um, clip. But here, I'm gonna draw the z equals zero plane. And then in it, I'm going to draw the solution. So x squared plus y squared equals zero. That has only the single solution at the origin. So there's that. And then let's go upstairs a little bit uh, and look at z equals one. And so at z equals one, see, so I'll go up a notch right here. And now I'm gonna be looking at x squared plus y squared equals one. And so that's a unit circle. So that's gonna be something like this. And um, we can even go up higher. So here we are now at um, z equals two. And so here we've got x squared plus y squared equals two. And let's see, so if I rewrite this 
uh, root 2 squared, then you can see that the radius of the um, circle involved here is a square root of 2. So uh, what's that? I don't know. Well, it's okay. So the a circle of um, radius 1 would look like this. So a circle of radius square root of 2, well, that's like 1 and 1.1, 1 .1, sorry, 1.41, 1 blah, 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 something dealy. Uh, so we'll just here draw some random sketch and hope for the best. Um, <clears throat> okay, and if I were to go to minus 1 down below, then um, let's see, what do I have down here? I've got uh, x squared plus y squared equals minus one. There's no solutions to that, so it's empty. So that means that um, if I slice horizontally at level z equals minus one, I just miss, I just miss the surface. I just whiff, there's, there's no meat, no catching, nothing. Uh, there's no cut. So anyway, so that's useful information to know. So this whole thing extends only upward. And from that last positive example I did, I can see that if I go up to height four, which I guess would be, let's see, one, two, three, oh, sorry, I lost track of my scale here. Um, one, two, three, yeah, somewhere up there. Okay, that's about where I would get to radius two. Okay, something like that. And hopefully now, if I haven't bungled this too much, I did, I bungled it too much. You know what? I'm gonna shoot first and ask questions later. Hey, come on. Ah, even worse. Okay. There we go, all right, so there's my, oh wow, now it's not even symmetric. Um, but I can cheat here. I'm gonna make the new center of the world over here. Ta-da! Okay, look, it's perfect, beautiful paraboloid. That is an elliptic paraboloid. So <clears throat> the other thing, um, that makes this an elliptic paraboloid. So going back to what we said before, I said uh, squared terms have the same signs, and these parabolas open in the same direction. And an implication that follows from both of that, those is um, that the slices with z equals a constant are ellipses. And so that's why we call these ones elliptic paraboloids.